afternoon friends and thanks amit for this wonderful platform which has become more and more strategic in itself in terms of bringing various interests together uh, i am going to begin with a very provocative statement and i hope you will forgive me for that i have come here to celebrate on one hand the creativity that our society has and to complain about lack of hunger for innovations in the industry and i will elaborate i will elaborate why i see a lack of hunger in the industry the first dimension of that hunger lack of hunger is that if there is a pot of gold lying in front of us normally you will expect in india a chaos in europe maybe a line a queue but you would nevertheless expect a lot of people wanting to have a share in that pot why don't we have that in our country so what do i mean by pot of gold there are large number of young people solving problems we give them gandhian young technological innovation award this year honorable president gave the award at president's house in a festival of innovation and entrepreneurship so let me give an example there are three students from it delhi who realize that if you have to identify the bacterium for tb which is a very important disease and millions of people are affected and indian government has taken a decision to get over it by 2020 22 requires a special kind of microscope called as fluorescent microscope the fluorescent microscope normally cost anywhere between 3 to 4 lakhs 5 lakhs sometime even 10 lakhs which means that primary health centers in this country will never have a fluorescent microscope they will even not have sometime ordinary microscope but unless you identify this problem early it's very difficult to control early it is curable tb is curable so what did they do they took an ordinary microscope of 10000 rupees and attached another 10000 rupees device which makes it a fluorescent microscope now problem is solvable so what do you expect you expect that all those industries which are in med tech sector which want to have a scale which want to reach millions of 650000 villages of this country would have a queue outside this innovation outside these three people's lab isn't it nothing of that kind happened nothing of this kind happened let me give you another example again in the health sector i'll take few example from health sector first because that's such an important area such a sunshine industry such an area where lots of growth is possible where india is really doing well in terms of innovations at least so you have a primary health center doctor is treating the patient they have some calipers some forceps some spatula they use on one patient they need to sterilize it quickly so sometimes they heat it on the flame then they cool it and do various small small things but you need to sterilize them properly for a day sterilizer means autoclave autoclave cost it needs energy so you don't have power so what do you do you need maybe fuel gas and it takes some time for autoclaving these kids go to gigvti.techpedia.in study freeze they developed a small solution of 500 rupees with a solvent of only 200 rupees a liter in 2 minutes it sterilizes all your devices 500 rupees is the cost of a sterilizing devices it will be useful even for a frugal hospital not only for the primary health center it could be useful for any camp that you want to organize in the field because we must not spread the infections while diagnosing the patient again no queue let's go closer i to bombay i was there last night in idc there was a student avrikal he developed a very he found a problem that when you have intravenous injections many of you might have had or drip the vein is sometimes not easy to find so fellow has to prick two three times four times and you don't like it so he has a simple simple vein detector just a small device of 250 rupees put it on the hand there's a light which passes or goes to the uh, hand and the vein because of the different kind of blood that you have in vein and in artery immediately it comes up now you put the injection single prick it needs to be there in every place wherever the intravenous are given again no no query let's go to next stage steel we are one of the largest producers of steel 
one of the prize winners of this award few years ago was a steel company. So I went to a steel company, talked to the people at different levels, and then discussed, and I said, do you know, well, the most precious steel is sold in grams, not in tons. Specialty steel is sold in grams, because you need it for medical devices, you need it for defense, you need it for a whole range of strategic purposes. And we don't make it. But we can make it. How? There's a professor, the Pankar. He developed a tabletop furnace which can produce 3,000 degrees centigrade at 5 volts. And the wire will not get hot. It can smelt any material that you want. So if you want to produce 5 grams, you can produce 5 grams. You normally a blast furnace, you know how much it does cost. So it will use, if you need to make small quantity of materials, you need very sophisticated furnaces. We don't have them. This fellow has done it. I arranged the CEO of the company to go and visit his lab, see that in action. How does he smelt? He can melt aluminum at room temperature with this device in your front of your eyes. No traction. No traction. And I can go on. Large number of innovations in material science, in steel, in health, in food. You name the area and we have innovations. And yet, not many are getting traction. Let me give you another example, closer to home, because all of you must have someone in your family who needs a walker. Right? Somebody in the family, young or old, might be using walker. A walker is a device which you know, you shaped, you hold it in your hand, and take with the help, resting on it, you walk. Now, walkers in USA, walkers in Europe, walkers in India have one major defect. If the user of the walker has to climb the steps like this, it, the person cannot because the legs of the walker are not adjustable. So one girl, Shalini, from Patna, class 8, sent us an idea that could the front legs be adjustable? Our team got it made. The walker is in the market. But how many pieces have sold? Less than 1,000 pieces. Will the Walker reached the global market because it's, it's meeting not just Indian need, it is meeting global need. Every person who needs a walker, needs this walker with a flexible leg, but it, can this small entrepreneurs whom we have given a non-exclusive license can ever, can ever give a scale? No. So there are opportunities where needs are very clearly articulated, gap is very obvious, functionality is very clear, problem has been solved, why doesn't it get scale then? Where is the problem? How do I explain this problem? What is, what is the downside of it? Where is the mistake? Solution is working very well. Cost is very low, 1,500 rupees. Nobody in the world can give you a flexible walker in 1,500 rupees. It's a frugal innovation. Easy to maintain, no problems. So there's certainly a problem. And the problem is that perhaps we are either suffering from a syndrome very popular in literature called as not invented here, so if it is not an innovation from my workshop, my lab, then it is not interesting. Sorry. The open innovation framework meant that you will seek insights from anywhere. So my second proposition is the first change that we need to bring about, if we really want to transform not only Indian industry, but Indian industries leveraging capability globally, there's something unique that we can bring on the table. And if we have to do that, then what are the things that we need to change? So first thing that we need to change is we need to go towards what I call as innovation playground, where both inside out and outside in should be aggressively, feverishly, impatiently pursued. What is inside out? What Tesla did. They opened all their patents because they wanted competitiveness, but not with others, with themselves. They wanted to compete with themselves. They wanted more companies to come in the market so that charging stations will be very many, so that people will be encouraged to take car, electrical car for longer distance. And that required a lot of charging stations. Nobody will set up charging stations only for one company. And they knew that by the time other people copy our technology, use my patents, and develop good batteries and all of that, I would have come out with new, innov new innovations. I will be ahead of the curve always. Not a problem. You are confident. If I ask you, your last week's Upload to download ratio. Carefully listen to me. Upload to download ratio individually and from the point of view of a company. 
what will be the number is there anyone here who has it more than one that means you have uploaded more you have shared more knowledge than what you have downloaded is there anyone here i don't find one wherever i go i ask this question india is becoming a consumer of knowledge from global knowledge we are the biggest consumer in the world if you look at the total gigabyte that we consume in terms of downloading but how much are we uploading are we saying that there is no lesson in my company which can improve the performance of the industry not just the firm and that will not affect my performance because if my other company my colleague my competitors also improve their performance i will have incentive to do even better so there will be a continuous innovation in my company because i will be creating my own competition by giving others the knowledge that i have which they can use and perform better leaders do this all the time leaders do this you know how many patents ibm open on one rupee license one dollar license why did they do that because they wanted to know something which i can't find use for somebody else can find use for let me find out who is that creative person who knows better than me as to how they can use my intellectual property wonderful idea so first thing second thing i would suggest is can we have a indicator in our board meeting how much of content how much of data how much of insights how much of experiences in solving different problems did we share with others something which will not threaten you of course so let's say when mohan bhai and uh, karsan bhai sit together and discuss look you are transporting your syntax tanks i am transporting my detergent why don't i put my detergent bags in your tanks the same truck can carry both synergy collaboration the competition here took place through collaboration if i share more people will come to me this is a good idea what can we do with you you are in the business of glass i am in the business of uh, like thermex in the boilers i use rice straw rice straw when burned contains gives ash which contains more than 90% silica for glass industry this is a raw material for me this is a waste material i have to dispose it of i have to pay to get this ash dumped somewhere in there plays and clog the veins of the earth and you know all those environmental problem that i cause but for glass industry this is the raw material third thing can we create ecosystem maps in industrial ecology we define a waste as a material for which use has not yet been found zero waste economy is possible those who waste less are more competitive those who use energy better are more competitive always it's a well known principle where is the exchange that we have where we have listed oh i have a steel plant i have so much of slag you are in the construction business can you make blocks prefabricated blocks out of this slag of course it can be done it's a very good material for that a lot of houses will be built now can be built at very low cost using a waste material which you have in tons of thousands of tons in the plant not knowing what to do with it but we are when are we doing this we are not thinking together we are not creating a, a exchange of these materials where people will then find opportunities to use it government of india talks about circular economy how do we make circular economy work without creating such an exchange fourth point i was thinking that i have walked in every part of the country through shodh yatras you know more than 5 6000 kilometers i was wondering whether we could have shodh yatras on the industrial floor shop floor why because there is hardly any shop floor where somebody on the shop floor has not modified a machine that you imported and or manufactured for suiting the local conditions i can't believe any shop floor exists like this i have met such people in the shop floor so i know that they are there i went to one of these plants very big plants and i said on your wall i don't find a single photograph of a worker or a supervisor who did something remarkable which surprised you and you went my god this what a great idea to give an example there is a salt plant barara very large tatas so they had a problem of salt coming out of the factory and they wanted to segregate it into large particles small particles smallest particles so this is a costly process a worker gave a simple idea have a screw in the outer pipe actually where they you are they are delivering the salt out of the factory the physics says that the the largest particle move the slowest 
the smaller particle go farther and the smallest particle goes farthest. Segregation is done. Does anybody know the name of the worker? No. Did, they, did the company know? No. They wanted my help for the innovation. I said, give me a list of problems that your people solved creatively without anybody's help. And they didn't have a list like that. And I asked this question at the Civil Service Award a few years ago. I asked the Government of India Secretary. I said, can you give me one file in your ministry where you have all the great ideas that came from people at different levels which you found very interesting, very inspiring, sometimes very intriguing. And they didn't have one. So what else can I say if you don't have a record of ideas that your own people have developed in your own company and don't track it? So can we have industrial show the atlas? Can we track? Can we take some time off and walk through the shop floor, go to the people, ask them, give me an idea that you have. Maybe you have been thinking, you've been working with this machine for 20 years. How is it possible that you wouldn't think of improving it? Surely you would have thought about it. Yes, sir, I've thought about it. Give me two days, three days, give me a workshop and I'll show you what I can do. Fifth point, can we have incubators in the industry? Most incubators in the country are in academic institutions. The ones which are in the industry are for only internal people. If there is an auto industry, and if this time one award went to, uh, went to an innovator team outside of IIT and ISER, and this was in Pune, one of the co local colleges. And these three girls had developed a very interesting filter system by which the carbon, very high quality carbon can be extracted from the exhaust which you can use for making ink or other things. Good idea. Now, if auto industry in Aurangabad, large number of vendors exist, if they could incubate this idea, it will obviously get much better and will become more practical and much become, become product much faster. But we don't have such places. It wouldn't cost much. 5,000 square meters is not a big space to find somewhere, <laughs> one of your old uh, godown or somewhere, and ask people, young people from all over, come here. If in my vertical, if you have any idea to test, I'll give you all the support. My machines are available. My foreman is available. My supervisors are available. My chemicals are available. Try things out. And solutions will emerge. Doesn't cost much. Can be done. What is the downside of it? If young people come around, anyway, they will infuse some energy. They'll work day and night, inspire some others. When we are people are going off the duty, they can stop by for a few days, a few hours, and just talk with them. Some of them may get interested and say, look, I'm not going home today. I'm going to spend night with you. And something interesting will happen. Simple. Very easily we can do that. Seventh point. You know, IPR is a very important instrument, intellectual property right. Recently, with the help of two students, Zagam and Bebiki, we have compiled a database of all the abandoned and expired patents at US USPTO in the last 20 years. It took a lot of effort, but these kids were very smart. They said, sir, we have passed out. We took a course with you. Give us a challenge that we can do. I said, take this problem and do it. Why? Because this is an open source, high value, intellectual resource waiting to be used. Problem case, man. What is the problem? Why can't we use it? Now that I have done it, very soon it will be up on the web. You can all use it. Because some of the patents are abundant because fees is not paid after seven years, sometimes 11 years, sometimes more. And many times you don't get traction, so there's no point. Fees keeps on increasing with passage of time. So these are good, innovative solutions somebody has developed somewhere, couldn't carry it on, couldn't find market. Maybe it was he or she was ahead of the time. You can use it. Eighth, we have a database called as techpedia.in or techpedia.sashi.org. We pooled. How many projects? 200,000 engineering projects. 200,000 engineering projects. Done by how many students? 550,000 students of this country. Why did we do that? Because we didn't want any student of our country. Most of you, many of you are engineers. And you did a project in your college days, isn't it? What happened to that project? Do you know? No, you don't know. I know. Because I have a database. And we have tracked 200,000 mind. 500,000 mind, 200,000 projects. Why did we do that? We didn't want any student to do what has been done before. Now, these are half-baked bricks. You are building, building. You are making building. You need bricks. Please use these half-baked bricks. Combine them, bake them, converge them. Do what you with it. Take them forward. If you like it, send a small contribution to the department where this student had studied. If you can locate the student, invite that student for a dinner or lunch. Tell him, look, boy or girl, your idea saved us so many millions. Wouldn't it be nice? A good gesture. But we are not doing that. And mind you, these are the students who are coveted by the industry around the world. So it is not that they are used. That most of you were a student at one time. And you did your projects. And you already tracked this. We did it. And it is available on, on the net. 
open access. So there are building blocks of innovation at all levels. In patent office, it is there. In student projects, it is there. How many of us have engaged students in a distributed problem-solving manner and given one problem, five parts of it, to 50 teams, one part, at least one team will surprise you with the result? What is the cost of doing that? You spend your own R&D project. You have spent already two million, five million on that project for th three years. Let's say for the minute, for sake of assumption, you couldn't crack it. Now please spend fifty thousand dollars or hundred thousand dollars on five hundred or five thousand students. Give them and invite their synopsis on the problem. And don't give them the entire problem. You're, you want to preserve your IP? Preserve it. Divide it into four, five modules so that nobody knows what is the part of it. It, it full part is. Give it to different people. Let them give you a synopsis. You select the synopsis, invest it, 5,000, 10,000, 20,000, 25,000 rupees. If they do it well, you found a good engineer to hire. So your recruitment cost goes down. And on the contrary, uh, if you don't want him, the fellow got great opportunity to work on a challenging problem. So the student will become a better engineer. So I think we must think of ways in which the young people of this country who are willing to do something for the whole world but are not being challenged enough. The biggest the regret that a young person has today is not that the person is not finding opportunities. He is not finding challenge. We are not giving them, give them challenge enough. And the, the, the entire transformation that we have been able to achieve is by putting challenges in the hand of the people. You have heard about Mitty Cole. You know how much wealth he has generated from a debt of 25 lakhs a few years ago? All by the transformation that he got. Can we do that more? So let me close by saying that the frugal, inclusive, and sustainable innovations. Frugal, inclusive, and sustainable inclusion. Innovations are the need of the hour. Don't stop at frugal and inclusive. A one rupee sachet is frugal and inclusive. But the cost of collecting that plastic piece from 650,000 villages of my country is so huge that it is not frugal anymore. It is not frugal for the environment, for the earth. Correct? So it should be sustainable. It should be sustainable. Use the recyclable material, use the material which can be composted, then it becomes frugal. Otherwise, it's very costly innovation. So let us not have definitions wrong. Let us not have definitions wrong because a lot of people are propagating this myth that low cost is what frugal is. No. Low cost for whom? Not just for the company, not for the consumer, not for the supply chain, but also for the earth. For all the actors, it should be low cost. Then it is sustainable. Then it is inclusive. Otherwise, not. So I would uh, suggest that if we can develop a very concrete plan of work, and I was telling Amit that please don't call me just for giving a talk because there must be some action at the end of the day. There must be some result that we should achieve. We should have some difference made today to some mind so that we are able to change this situation and get a more agile, a more responsive, a more reciprocal open innovation system where you will not invest only in the idea that you are going to use today or tomorrow, but also ideas that might be useful sometime in future. The societies which grow invest in ideas that may not have any utility for the next 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. But they invest in future. And I think we should look far and recognize that if we need to support innovation ecosystem, then we must think of supporting innovations, not necessarily which are useful for my company. Innovations, not necessarily which are immediately useful. And innovations which are not necessarily coming from my company. All the three, not from within, not immediately, and not just for myself. If we can do that, there will be a buoyancy in the innovation ecosystem and I'm sure that it will spur the whole economy and this platform would have been an instrument of bringing about this transformation. Thank you so much.